your book is really one of the one of the one of the ways to overcome this and live a non-anxious life. You you share that community is so essential and you talk about how we've outsourced community and we've outsourced it to the point where we have Uber drivers in, taking us to the airport rather than our friend taking us to the airport. We hire movers instead of having uh, asking somebody from our church to come help us because we don't want to inconvenience somebody on a Saturday. And that part really spoke to me because it was so much truth and it was so like, it was eye-opening because number, number one, you're making terrible financial decisions as soon as you're in a bind and have to go out of town for something. And then number two, it's like you're not able to rely on anybody. You're not having anybody you can call when you're in a pinch. You're not having anybody that you can, hey, I'll get you some pizza come through and, and help me move. You know, you got a truck, like let's hang out for the day, but I need right, some hands, right, right. like get a workout in. And I found a lot of value in that when I've done that in the past. And it's interesting though, you talk about the airport. I started feeling really convicted for it as far as uh, my brother-in-law, he gave me a ride to the airport in the morning, super early one day, really recently. And then uh, I was really grateful for it. He's like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll do anything to help out family. And it, it just shocked me. It's almost like it was transactional. I felt like I, if I do this for him, I have to help him with the greenhouse on our land. And I literally, yeah. I opened with that dude. And I was like, oh, that's gross. Like, why did that happen? And your book has really been like a, an eye-opening moment of like, no, that's it's okay. And then you also, I really felt convicted when he asked me to give him a ride to the airport, John, I felt like I owed him something because of the favor that he did for me. And he's like, bro, you don't owe me a favor. Like, it's okay. Like if you can't do it, cause I had previous obligations in those last minute. Yeah. And uh, it was just weird because I realized that like, yo, I think I'm this social butterfly and I'm, I'm somebody that has good friendships. But then when you really look at the meat and potatoes of my community and of my expectation of them, I felt like, wow, John, John's book really is just helping me with that. It's powerful. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we have professionalized human interaction. Right. Like the idea that, that there has to be a committee of people who say hello at a church building, that should ring every alarm we have, that we have a sick culture. <laughs> <laughs> like a surf like, team to say hi. People are on the <laughs> greeting team. What? To say hi? Like that's where we I mean that's what are we doing? Dude, that's good. What are we doing? That's gold. And, and so I, I mean it just and it just gets worse from there. I mean it's there's the hospitality committee and the food com- What are we doing? Yeah, man. Like it's... man, we need a group of people to make some food. All right, we got you. Cuz cuz we're in the same gang. I need a, I need to ride. And, and and also beneath all of that dude is this idea Man, we think we are such a burden to everybody. Yeah, we do. We don't think we're worth a ride to the airport. Mm. I don't want to bother my neighbor. I want to. I want them to like. I know how intrusive it is when somebody rings my doorbell trying to sell me like a you know like a home security system I don't need or want or magazines or something. And so I don't want to bother my neighbor asking for eggs. I'll just, dude. I'll just, I'll just Instacart them and see if I can have somebody bring them over. And. What I, what I realized is there's a lot of psychological l- psychology literature talking about what a gift it is to help your neighbor, to help mm. somebody. And so what I realized when I don't ask my neighbor for, for, hey, can you help me? Like I live out in the woods on, on some property too. In my driveway, we just got crazy storms. My driveway is a gravel driveway and it gets these big washed yeah, out dude, tracks in it. Relatable. And my, uh, my neighbor, he's 75 years old. He's got a tractor and we have a pretty good arrangement. I give him eggs from my chickens and venison and my wife makes this amazing homemade bread and he comes and grades Ooh. my driveway. Ooh. And I tried to give him cash and he was really, had his feelings hurt. The first time he did it, I sent my son over with an envelope full of cash because I'd paid somebody a thousand bucks to do that same job, to come yeah. grade the whole thing. And, re- and he's like, and he said this line, he said, hey, I'm your neighbor. Wow. He's a 75-year-old farmer. And I was like, oh, man. Mm. And then we took him a basket of, of homemade pickles from my wife's garden and like bread and some of the venison from that I, I went hunting. He stopped his work. He put down all his tools, got all choked up, and gave me a hug. 75-year-old farmer. And so I realized, oh, the, he values the time my family put into making this basket for him mm. and his family, provision. He don't want my paper money. He don't want cash. And it was this idea that I thought I was a burden to my neighbor. And in fact, by asking him for help, I'm giving him life. Now, of course, you can abuse that. You can take advantage of people and you can become codependent. That's what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about looking in the mirror and my first thought not being, I'm not even worth a couple of eggs. I'm not worth a cup of sugar. I'm just going to call. And we have to, as a culture, we have to get over that because we are drowning from loneliness. Yeah. And you talk about that a lot. You even say we're outsourcing, uh, we're outsourcing everything from, from the point, from the, even the greater decisions that we have to make in life. We're kind of relying on other people to define that for us. And we're, we're struggling to the point where 
identities become like we're saying earlier about, you know, I have OCD, I have this. It's almost as if people don't want to seek out the peace that, that, um, that seems to happen. And we've lost, we, you said in your book, we've lost a definition of peace. So why is yeah. that? Why is our, we don't, we, don't, we don't even have it. Well, yeah. I think, I think we're living in an unprecedented time of, mm -hmm. and this is going to sound wild coming on the back of COVID and everything, but we have an unprecedented time of both constant war and yeah. being very disassociated from it. And so I've got my, I mean, I've got a lot of connections in the, in the military community. And so they've been at war for 20 years, but that hasn't hit the average U S citizen. Not like world war two did not like world war one did not like the Vietnam war did. Yeah. And so there's a media divide that's, that's really shielding us from all this going on. And so we're bebopping around life thinking everything's rosy and wonderful and great. Well, here's the deal. My granddad fought Nazis. He knew evil. And when he got out of the war, and again, I still don't, he was some kind of code break. I don't know exactly what he did. I know he, he wasn't an infantryman, but I know when he got home, he knew what peace was. And it was not that, right? Mm. We don't, we've lost that. We have no idea what peace is. And so instead of chasing stability, instead of chasing, um, instead of chasing joy, we chase happiness and happiness is just cotton candy and fireworks and cocaine. We're just chasing the next good feeling. And all of a sudden we've, we've just good feeling ourselves off a cliff, man. There's only so many donuts you can eat before your body goes, Hey, I quit, man. You can't do that. And we just keep chasing it and chasing it and chasing it and chasing it because we're untethered to anything that makes any sense to our bodies. Thank you so much for supporting our YouTube channel. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. If you would like to see another short clip from this episode, you can do so here. Or if you want to see the full conversation, you can do so here. And make sure you subscribe on Patreon. If you'd like to partner with us, you can do that at the link in the description of this video. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.